Have you ever heard of the tsunami of syrup? It sounds like something straight out of a children's cartoon, right? Like a delicious, sticky, funny disaster? But the reality of what happened in Boston in 1919 is a story of pure horror. It's one of those historical events that sounds completely fake, but I promise you, it's horrifyingly real. This is the story of the Great Molasses Flood. It was January 15, 1919, in the north end of Boston. The day was unseasonably warm. A massive storage tank, over 50 feet tall, stood near the harbor. It was owned by the Purity Distilling Company and held a staggering 2.3 million gallons of crude molasses. Waiting to be turned into industrial alcohol, witnesses later reported hearing a deep rumbling, like a train, followed by a series of metallic groans and pops, like a machine gun. Then, the tank exploded. A colossal wave of dark, thick, hot molasses, estimated to be 25 feet high at its peak, burst out and crashed through the streets. But this wasn't a slow-moving ooze. This wave moved at an estimated 35 miles per hour. 35 miles per hour. It had the force of a locomotive. The pressure was so immense that it completely flattened buildings, tore them right off their foundations. It snapped the steel girders of an elevated railway track, causing a train to derail. It picked up wagons and horses, tossing them through the air. This is where the cartoon image completely shatters. People and animals were caught in this thick, inescapable tide. Imagine being trapped in a river of hot, sticky syrup. It's not like water. You can't just swim out of it. It's dense, it's heavy, and as it cooled, it became even thicker. Horses were stuck in it like flies in amber, struggling until they were completely exhausted. Rescuers who rushed to the scene found themselves sinking into the molasses up to their waists, making every step a monumental effort. They struggled for hours, sometimes days, to pull victims free from the suffocating goo. The Boston police, fire department, and even cadets from a nearby naval training ship worked tirelessly in the sticky, brown muck. In the end, the tsunami of syrup claimed 21 lives and injured over 150 people. The cleanup was a massive undertaking, taking weeks. Crews used salt water from the harbor to wash the molasses into the drains, but the sticky residue lingered everywhere. And here's the final eerie detail. For decades afterwards, locals swore that on hot summer days, the streets of Boston's North End still smelled faintly sweet, like pancakes. A strange haunting reminder of one of the weirdest and most tragic disasters in American history. Thanks for watching, and if you found this story as bizarre as I did, make sure to like and subscribe for more hidden history.